this Sunday and, and Christmas is a time to rejoice. And yet in the readings we see something about disappointment. And I think there's a real connection there. Um, there's a group of kindergartners who were also putting on a, a play at Christmas time. And there were four little cherubs, um, each carrying a sign. And on each sign there was one letter. When they all stood together, it would read S-T-A-R, star. Well, the time came for them when, it, when the star was supposed to appear over where the child Jesus was born. And on their way, they got a little sidetracked. And when they turned around at their signs, it read R-A-T-S, rats. <laughs> a little disappointed was the uh, director of that little play because they got it mixed up. Things like that happen. We see John the Baptist in the gospel today. He's in prison and wondering, I'm sure, and very troubled. Why was he there and when, why was God delaying and coming to help him? It says that he told the, his disciples to go and ask Jesus if he was really the Messiah. Was John beginning to doubt because Jesus was delaying and coming to save him? Did he wonder if he was really the Messiah? Or did he just want his disciples to hear it from Jesus himself? We don't really know. But psychologically, I would imagine John would be thinking, he came to bring liberty to captives. Why am I still in prison? And he was disappointed. Oftentimes, we get disappointed in our lives, too. And sometimes God doesn't do things the way we want them. That seems to be a theme regularly in the scriptures. But it's good for us to, to meditate upon because it affects all of us. There was a, a young boy who, who wanted a, a, a pony for Christmas. And he made sure that everybody knew that's what he wanted. And it was a week or so before Christmas, he told his parents, if I don't get a pony, then I don't want anything at all. I really want that pony. So Christmas morning came and they all came down to the Christmas tree. His sisters, with excitement, were opening their gifts, and he's looking all around for his pony, but there's no evidence that there is one. And so he got rather upset, and he went out to the barn just because he was depressed and disappointed. His mother went after him to bring him some comfort, but that didn't do any good. And his father was watching for him out the window of the house, and that didn't do him any good either. And so he decided to take a walk. And while he was walking, he saw a man coming down the street um, who was walking a pony. And he got all excited. He thought, that must be my pony. Well, the man came walking, and he walked right by his house. And he was so upset that he finally just started screaming and crying and yelling out his disappointment. And with that, the man that had the pony turned around and came back, and he said, he heard the boy and he said, I'm looking for Lenny Stevens. Do you know where he lives? And he says, well, I'm Lenny Stevens. He said, well, wonderful. He said, here's the pony that you're getting for Christmas. And Lenny Stevens couldn't believe it. He was so excited that he didn't even hear the man's excuses for being late with the pony. He, later in life, he said he didn't know whether that was his worst Christmas or his best Christmas. Um, looking back and thinking that he doubted the Lord would hear his prayer. And the Lord did, but in his own way, in his own good time. And I think as I look over my life, and probably as many of you my age do too, um, we can look back when there were disappointments, when there was illness, when there were struggles in our life, and we wondered where God was and why wasn't he answering my prayer. And yet, after we got through those experiences, there usually was something good that came from it, something we learned, something that happened that we didn't expect. And it gave us a reason to trust more in God. And so I think the readings today, and St. James tells us in the second reading, that God is coming again, and we should rejoice. But in the meantime, be patient. Hold on to your faith and trust that the Lord is always with you. And I think that's what Advent reminds us of as we prepare to 
celebrate the tremendous gift of Christ at Christmas, we realize that we need to thank God for all the things that are good around us. We all have disappointments. We all have things we're praying for. We're all th have things that we would really like for Christmas that maybe are pretty unreasonable. John the ba or the the the, uh, the the signs that John the Baptist saw, he wasn't seeing what they meant. He saw that the lame were walking and the deaf were hearing and so forth from Jesus, and he raised people from the dead. But he still didn't understand the signs. Sometimes we miss the signs around us, and the signs around us are of God's goodness to us. When we can look at the fact that we're here in church tonight, we should be grateful. It's a sign of God's presence with us. He got us here. When we look at the home we live in, the family that we have, the friends that we have, all kinds of things that are so very important to us, those are the things we need to be grateful for, and they are the signs of God's love for us. And so we know that the Lord will come again. When we celebrate Christmas, James tells us that Jesus was the beginning. He was born and he was the beginning of fulfilling what Isaiah talked about in the first reading about all the joy and happiness that there would be. But he's not finished with it yet. He needs you and me um, to be his agents in the world, to bring about the goodness and the peace and the joy that he wants to bring. And so we just need in this Christmas season to have hearts full of joy in the midst of many crises that we see around us and realize that we should not fear because the Lord is with us. And most especially, he's here with us in his body and blood in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. So tonight we thank the Lord for what he's given us. We ask him to help us be patient as we await the time when we will see him face to face in the kingdom of heaven.